Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at your preliminary white Christmas forecast and chances for some snow on the ground on Christmas Day. We're going to be taking a look at my early forecast for this uh, at the end of the video, but we're also going to be taking a look at the current snow depth and what some of the models are showing over the next 10 days in terms of snowfall. And I'll probably update this forecast as we get closer to probably uh, on Christmas Eve or the day before Christmas Eve, I'll probably put out a uh, official forecast for who I'm expecting to see a white Christmas this year. So uh, this is just an early look at that, but definitely we have a decent idea of who may be getting a white Christmas this year. Now, here is the current National Weather Service page. We have some winter weather advisories and some winter storm warnings still left up for parts of northern New England. We have winter weather advisories up for portions of the wet uh, in, the, in the western United States, as well as some wind advisories further south of there, and some high wind warnings and watches up for parts of Montana. We also see some freeze warnings and frost advisories for portions of northern Florida and southern Georgia and then we see some winter weather advisories and some wind chill advisories for portions of central Alaska with some blizzard warnings still up for northwestern Alaska so before we do get into uh, the white Christmas forecast, I do want to address what happened yesterday with that storm, uh, and this is kind of how I'm thinking the forecast went. It really overperformed over uh, this part of the interior northeast, where some of these areas got 40 or more inches, and I'm, I'm actually going to read off some of your totals in a little bit for some of these areas. Uh, it did underperform, I think, really for this part of eastern Pennsylvania and northwestern New Jersey. That area really did underperform, but then it overperformed again as we get closer to the coast where you got a lot more snowfall than what was expected mainly because that rain snow transition really didn't happen until later on at night and it was a very brief rain snow transition for many areas and then you went back to snowfall in a lot of areas uh, and then over the Ohio Valley it was actually a pretty good forecast and really nothing too major happened you did see a couple spots where they picked up closer to three or four or more inches uh, but other than that not a lot uh, really went too uh, crazy over portions of the Ohio Valley. So I'm going to read off your top five uh, snowfall spots. Three miles south of Ludlow, Vermont, which is in southeastern Vermont, they got 44 inches of snowfall. Two miles southeast of Newark Valley, New York, uh, which is just north of Binghamton, New York, they got 44 inches of snowfall. And Binghamton, New York itself, I believe, got somewhere around 41 inches, which breaks the all-time uh, snowfall, 24-hour snowfall record. They got 41 inches of snowfall in Binghamton. Three uh, miles east-northeast of Alba, Pennsylvania, which is in north-central Pennsylvania, that, they got 43.3 inches of snowfall. One mile north-northeast of Tioga Terrace, New York, they got 43 inches of snowfall, which is just southwest of Binghamton, and then Owego, New York, they got 41 inches, which is just northwest of Binghamton, so it was right around that Binghamton area that really saw quite a bit of snowfall, and I'm just going to read off the top snowfall reports for each state, so for Maine, the top snowfall report was 5 miles north-northwest of Acton, Maine, where they got 17.5 inches, New Hampshire, it was in New London, New Hampshire, where they got 36 inches of snowfall, which is in West central New Hampshire. Vermont, it was again South Lud uh, Ledo, uh, where they got 44 inches. New York, it was that area in southeast Newark Valley, uh, two miles southeast, southeast of Newark Valley, where they got 44 inches. Massachusetts, Goshen, uh, Massachusetts, that's where they got 17 inches. Uh, in Burlington, Connecticut, they got 14.5 inches. Bur Burlville, uh, Rhode Island, they got 12 inches. Uh, Stockholm, New Jersey, they got 12 inches as well. And then moving over to Pennsylvania, uh, three miles east northeast of Alba, that was uh, the record for Pennsylvania, and they got 43.3 inches. Delaware, it was one mile northeast of Tallyville, and they got 5.7 inches. Maryland, uh, Sablesville, uh, got 12 inches. Uh, for Virginia, it was Basie, and they got a 11.5 inches. West Virginia, it was one mile northwest of Hamilton, where they got 12 inches. Ohio, uh, they got 7.5 inches in Bridgeport. Michigan, they got uh, 1.8 inches in Berkeley, which is right near Detroit. And then in Indiana, they in Marion, Indiana, they got 4.5 inches. And then uh, for Illinois, they got 3 inches in Ashley, Illinois, which is in the southern part of the state. And then for Genevieve, uh, Missouri, they got 1.5 inches. So really, it, you did see quite, uh, quite high snowfall total 
totals for a lot of these areas and again it was really the stretch where it really overperformed for these areas now let's start talking about that white Christmas forecast and let's start off with the European model we're gonna go through 10 days and just see how many storms you really do get out of this so you have two energies, uh, you have two different areas of energy for this first part. We have a little front that's moving through. We have a northern part of energy. We have a southern part of the energy, and that is going to kind of converge, and you might get something over to the northeast, uh, another potential uh, somewhat of a snowstorm. It's only going to be a couple inches, but definitely it might help uh, increase your chances over the interior northeast. As we get through Saturday and then moving through Sunday, we're seeing some of that uh, colder dip down and that might lead to some snowfall over the interior in northeast as we get to Sunday or this weekend. Uh, here would here be by Monday and you're maybe looking at a light uh, dusting or coating on top of whatever you saw from Winter Storm Gale, uh, which a lot of these areas saw 20 plus inches. So that is definitely not going to be melting in time for Christmas time. So I think those areas have a decent chance of seeing a white Christmas. Then as we get through Monday, we're seeing another other area of energy and by the way the uh, east coast is going to be very active ex especially as you get just east of the east coast uh, right through this through this area you're going to notice a lot of storms move through there if one or two of those storms does curve around like we actually saw with gale a lot of these uh, models didn't pick up on on it uh, for about uh, until it was about six or seven days in uh, so we still have a lot of time for this to move and uh, if we keep on seeing all of this activity off the east coast it's only a matter of time before one of them does merge with some uh, piece of northern energy and then become another snowstorm so definitely watch out if you do live along the east coast because it, with all those storms off the shore one or two of them might make its way uh, closer to shore and might become another nor'easter type system so we see a little wave of energy move through the northern great lakes and then you start to see that dip into the northeast maybe another uh, fresh coating of snowfall on top of whatever you saw from gale as well and then as we continue forward, you start to see that by the 22nd, so we're only three days from uh, Christmas by this point, and what you want to pay attention to is this is going to be maybe the storm that a lot of models have been uh, actually pinpointing for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day over portions of the Ohio Valley and into the Northeast. A lot of these a lot of these models have been showing some snow for some of those regions. We start off with a thin band of snow moving through the upper Midwest and into the Northern Rockies, and then that splits off and you start start to see that we get this frontal system to move through and then you start to see again that front forms over portions of Louisiana up through into Indiana and kind of a northeast fashion where you're looking at uh, uh, some rain going from southwest to northeast and as we continue this forward you start to see some of that switches over to snow as we get some of that colder air to push in uh, overnight on Thursday morning and then getting through Thursday evening and into Friday morning which would be Christmas uh, and we're looking at potentially some sort of snow there now something i'm going to roll this back notice that we do have again one of those uh, offshore systems that isn't going to play a factor into the surface weather but potentially if that does move a little bit further west which it definitely could you might have some sort of merging of these two systems i don't think that's definitely likely but it's just something that you want to pay attention to because we are still about eight days out from christmas so there is still so much that can change and the fact that we're seeing a lot of these storms moving along in this area definitely uh, is a very good if you like snow along the east coast because that does mean that there is some sort of activity over there it's not just these tiny systems moving through if one one or two of them does develop and move closer to the west you will probably see some snow out of that in the cold pattern that we're currently in so definitely pay attention to even though they might not give rain on the models uh, definitely pay attention to all of these storms that move off the east coast because in longer term they will have a bigger player uh, they will be a bigger player into what actually happens we see the system uh, move through into the Ohio Valley dump some snowfall potentially for those areas on Christmas Eve and then you're in that cold air mass for Christmas Day so you probably won't see too much melting uh, on Christmas Day also this won't produce a lot of rain so any snow that you do see from winter storm gale probably it's the biggest threat is not going to be the rain it might be just some marginally above freezing temperatures that might slowly eat away at some of those snow totals totals uh, and then that system really moves out of here and we're pretty much clear for the next couple of days after Christmas now here's your current snow depth and uh, we definitely see that footprint that winter storm gale left and this is only I believe uh, through 
uh, this morning, so we really didn't see all of those uh, full totals up from uh, portions of Pennsylvania, upstate New York, and to portions of northern and central New England where the storm is still going on, but you can expect that those totals will really start to fill in. So this is how much snow you have on the ground right now. We see uh, some snow cover for portions of the central part of the U.S. that might stick around a little bit until Christmas, and then definitely over the Rockies, it's looking like you guys have a very, very good chance at seeing that white Christmas. Now, here's Here's what the European model does in total. Some of this is from Gale, and actually a lot of this is from Gale, so you kind of have to subtract that away. Probably by tomorrow, as the models get rid of Gale on this, uh, on their models, you uh, it'll be much easier to tell where exactly is seeing the most snowfall uh, over the next 10 days, except for what happened yesterday with Gale. Here would be what the GFS model is showing, and it definitely shows that Ohio Valley system move through. Also, it shows a lot of snow for the upper Midwest, so we'll definitely have to pay attention to that and then here's what the Canadian model does and the Canadian model is still showing some of Gale but it's also showing another system getting closer to the east coast so definitely the Canadian model is on board with that idea of you get some sort of system to move closer to the east coast uh, but definitely it is something that I'm watching and it's definitely something that you guys should be watching because that is definitely something that the models aren't picking up on right now but you can't just look at what the models are showing now you have to look at what may happen and you have to look at all the possibilities of what could potentially happen. Now, here's my forecast for a white Christmas, uh, and I think it's going to be over 70%, probably near 90 or 100% chance for most of these areas over portions of the Rockies. That's where you're looking at uh, quite a decent snow cover, and definitely you have a very good chance of seeing some uh, some snow on the ground for Christmas Day. We also see some of that for the upper Great Lakes, away from the lake shores, really, uh, because as you get close to the lake shores, that's where you could get... Uh, some of those marginally warmer temperatures that might eat away at some of your snow depth and then also for that thin band uh, from Pennsylvania up through into northern New England where you saw over 40 inches in some areas I think it's definitely likely that you, you're not going to melt away 40 inches in eight days especially because we're not going into a warmer pattern it's actually going to be a much chillier pattern now Here's that 40 to 70% chance area, uh, and that includes portions of Nevada, Utah, into Colorado. We, th we see a thin area for Oklahoma and Texas. That's also from Winter Storm Gale when it was down there. Uh, you already have a couple inches on the ground, so that might stick around for a little bit more. The Northern Plains and getting into the Great Lakes and then that Ohio Valley system definitely gives the potential for some snow over those regions. And then uh, we already have some snow on the ground from Gale, but also you want to watch the potential for a potential East Coast storm if some of the models do shift around which they definitely could so i'm giving you guys generally probably closer to a 40 to 50 percent chance along the northeast coast of seeing some snowfall interior of there you have a much greater chance of seeing a white christmas as your temperatures will be colder and it'll be harder to melt away most of that snowfall now here's that less than 40 percent chance so you see that for some of the uh, mountains of southern california into oregon and washington and then back through into the southwest and then through the central plains and into portions of the tennessee Valley, and then again that little area uh, over portions of Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, southern New Jersey. That's mainly because you could see that outside chance of again some sort of no another system moving up the east coast. Definitely, I don't want to rule that out just yet. So I'm giving giving give you guys probably closer to a 10 to 20 percent chance of seeing snow for those regions. But I think that better chance would again be over that central and especially northern part of the United States, where you already have some snow on the ground and where you have the potential for some more snow to fall over the next couple of days so this is my pre the preliminary forecast i'm definitely going to have a more detailed christmas forecast as we get probably closer to uh, the day before christmas eve or even christmas eve itself uh, where i'll probably put out my white christmas forecast and my official one that's when we'll know the exact track uh, the exact tracks of these storms uh, and we'll have a much much better idea of what may uh, happen with the storm so that is going to wrap up uh, wrap it up for uh, today's video please consider liking the video subscribing and turning on notifications and i'll see you guys in the next video goodbye